lead you into the showers. He's giving you a bar of soap. The people of Israel, be safe of it, is dear. Please bring your valise and come with us to the showers where you will be given a nice clean shower and fresh clothing to wear. Commandante Kerry will help you. That's unbelievable. They get away with it. I guess people are stupid. They'll buy anything. Whatever they tell them, whatever they spoon feed the libs, they buy. And some of them are billionaires in Hollywood, live on 400-foot yachts. I don't understand how you don't understand why. How could men who live on three 400-foot yachts in the Mediterranean to avoid taxes support a, a, a socialist regime like this and want it in, in, on steroids with Hillary Clinton? Answer, they pay almost no taxes. They evade taxes. Their movie industry is given t uh, tax credits, and no one will attack them because they spend hundreds of millions of dollars to make sure no one ever ta taxes them or, or catches them. And they couldn't do that in a true free market economy. They'd have to pay their fair share of taxes, and the movie industry wouldn't be gave it, given favorite status. Any other questions? Because I have the answers. Now, admittedly, it's one man's opinion. It's my opinion. Michael Savage. Instant Michael Savage. Presto Magico. I don't know if I want to continue down this line. I've done so much in these hours that I'd like to move on to other topics. Also, I've eaten my tuna, uh, my fresh caught, line caught hippie tuna with fries and no salt in a salad. I feel so good, it's frightening. And all of the endorphins are raging through my frontal brain. My eyes are literally flickering with enjoyment. My dog ate the piece of roast beef. He's not a vegan. He got roast beef and some of those dog chips. He's laying underneath me with his butt against the wires. Where is he? Where are you? He's like a, I'm like, he's gone. Where is this guy? He's like, he's so elusive. Where did he go? I hope he's still alive. Maybe touched the wire and shriveled up into the amazing shrinking poodle. He's not here. Teddy, you ever get freaked out in your house with a dog? I, this is occurring more and more. You ever get, Teddy, Teddy, you do this, and you think they, they ran away, they got eaten up. And then they're laying right behind your feet, and you don't see him. <laughs> I don't see him. Hold on a minute. I'm not going to do a show. Hold on a minute. This, there he is. Okay. I should have known he ate, and he's lazy, too. He's sleeping on a sofa. <laughs> what do you think? He's stupid? He had roast beef and some chips made up of God knows what. And uh, he went to sleep on the couch. He was tired of laying on the floor. That's all. What do you think? He's dumb? The reason we love our pets is that they're our, they are our hobos, our hippies our bohemians, they are our homeless pets, when you think about it. They're like, they represent what we like to do, some of us. Hang around, eat, lick people just to get a little food. They do whatever they want, no one ever hurts them. <laughs> and they don't, they don't have to report to anyone for anything. As long as they don't crap on the floor, okay, fine. They do that in the beginning, I will never do it again. I, I love this dog, but he's 11, I don't know, let's not go with the box already with the I have two boxes from the last two pets uh, sitting on the mantle. I don't want, I'm never, I'm not going to go through it again. I can't, it's like losing, don't, don't say it because people get mad at you. It is like losing a friend or a person. Then you'll hear the next person say, no, they're better than people. No, I don't say they're better than people. Humans are different than dogs, but they're pretty damn good. They're pr I can't imagine having a horse die, what that's like. Now, don't call me if you're a rancher and tell me your heart story about your horse trigger died and how you were left heartbroken. I just don't understand it. It's bad enough losing a dog, but these horses, you look at their eyes, and I'm a city boy. You know they're conscious of you. You know they're loyal. You know that they would hoof stampede someone for you. But, wow, I don't know. What do you do with a dead horse? I just thought about that. What happened? I mean, a dog you know what to do with. I, I don't want to get into that too detailed, but what do they do with dead horses? They, they, they pull them away with a tractor, with a chain, and then what? I don't know where they go after that. I see it as a city boy in the movies. A horse dies, let's say. They, they tow it away. What do they do with it? Don't tell me glue factory. I don't want to hear that. Please. <laughs> Dog food they make out of your, your horse? My dog's eating a horse now? I don't know. I once had horse meat by accident. I had cousins who lived in a small town in Pennsylvania. So we'd go over there on holidays, train, Lehigh Valley Railroad. I used to love it. Train would leave uh, New York Central Station. And it was an electric locomotive. And then when it would get to New Jersey under the river, the train would stop and they would switch cars to a coal-burning train. Would you believe that? A coal-burning locomotive in my time. 
And because there were a lot of pollutants in New Jersey. That's why it looks like everyone's from the Sopranos. Uh, it was the pollution in the water and the air that produced anomalies in the people's faces that produced the equivalent of Tony Sopranos. And the Jersey Shore is a direct result of the pollution. There's no question about it. But nevertheless, the train would start to spew the, uh, the fumes. I love that train ride. I guess it's because it's holidays and I'm not going there now. They're all gone, whatever. And a train would chug along and I would eat, I'd take my magazines with me that my mother would let me buy. Even as a kid, I, I got, would you believe it as a city boy, I was buying gun magazines? Oh man, no, is that so ripe for you psychiatrists out there? Yes, as a little boy on the way to Pennsylvania, I would read gun magazines. I loved them. The hunting and fishing magazines. The name Winchester itself would excite me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 what's wrong with him? I was even on a rifle team in Manhattan, in Queens, New York. Would you believe it? Rifle teams? Yes, we had a rifle team. And I was issued a Mossberg 22. And I learned to be a crack shot in the basement of Jamaica High School. New York City had rifle teams. Can you imagine that in my generation? No one used drugs, you see. The psychiatrists were not yet dispensing mind-altering medications which destroyed boys' minds, where they'd run through the hall and kill everybody. So we didn't kill anybody. We didn't, even, we didn't take a gun and shoot ourselves. If we got unhappy, we talked to somebody. Well, we never, we actually, we never said anything about our unhappiness, to be honest with you. Do you know that even in my day, we never said a word about what was wrong? Nothing. They'd say, what's the matter? No, don't bother me. Nothing. We learned to be a man. We kept it to ourselves. What do you think? We didn't have pain? We had plenty of pain. Now everything, everything they cry, oh, this, this, everything is no, everything they're heartbroken over. This is no good. Boo, boo, take medication. I'm this, I'm that. I got this, this one wrong with me, that one wrong with me. <laughs> but we didn't kill ourselves in the numbers of today. How come all of this girly talk for men has produced more rage, more murder, more homicide, more suicide? Tell me why. Letting it all hang out, hippies, has worked to the opposite effect. That I want to talk about. That's something I want to talk about. Now I'm on to a subject I really want to talk about. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the way of all flesh that we're talking about, and it's the way of all nations. Nations are born, nations live, nations age, and nations die. And Obama appears to be the undertaker of our nation. He's the undertaker. He was elected just in time to bury the nation. Okay, uh, come on, I'm just joking. You know, he's a great man. You know, he's doing such good for the world. So I do have a 3.7 share on WMAL. It is, here it is, right in front of my eyes. Numbers don't lie. People lie about numbers, but I don't lie about numbers because numbers don't lie. I'm very proud of my, my ratings. I'm not giving you anything that's faulty. I'm saying this for a reason, is that there's a lot of thinking people who want to hear a different point of view than what they're getting, and they tune into shows like mine. It's that simple. And the show is up, 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 up. Even for August, it's up 40% in New York on WABC. It is up 50%. On, in, in, in Galveston, on KSEV. Washington, D.C., it's up 22%. That's awesome. Really, it's a monster, a big thing. I'm just looking. I'm just scanning. Is this up or down? I better be careful. Here, Detroit, Michigan, WJR, huge audience, up 50% from the last uh, ratings book. Someone's listening to the Savage Nation. It may not be you, you intelligent genius, you, who only you tune in to hear how s smart you are and how stupid I am. You know, you know everything. No one else knows anything. These are all idiots. They're all right-wing morons, not like you, a sophisticated, nuanced individual who listens to Vivaldi and takes an antidepressant. That's all. I'm not going to read you what went down, but those are the things that went up in their big stations. And that's what's important, because I'm not going to live forever. I'm not going to be on the radio forever. How do you like that? I've accepted my mortality recently. That's terrible. I almost feel like talking about it. That's why I brought up the dead animal and the dead horses. I'm starting to feel it heavily. I don't like it. I don't like the idea because my whole life I wrote with the idea I wasn't going to die. You know, I did. Most young men don't think, they think they're immortal. You've heard that. Now, that should last till you're 18 or 19. I ran with it well into my <laughs> recent years. I swear to you, 
I never accepted my mortality. Would you believe it? I, maybe it's a, it's a healthy, insane thing to do. The religious view is the exact opposite. They teach you that you're born and you're going to die and you're nothing and you go back to the earth. It's a horrible way to live. My God. How do you get up in the morning if that's what you believe? I don't understand traditional religions would teach you you're nothing but a, a foul-smelling seed and a dust. How do you live? You get up and say, I'm a piece of dust? Every morning you're supposed to get up and cross yourself and say ashes to ashes and dust to dust? How do you get up from that? That's like a psycho state. So I never did. I always felt that there'd be new discovery. I would put it out of my mind. There'll be discoveries. There'll be transplants. Uh, and people will discover the magic thing for this and that. I'll live forever. Because a man like me should live for a thousand years, as Zorba the Greek said, as, as written by Kazantzakis, as portrayed by uh, the great actor from Hollywood, who has a name I forgot. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to disrespect him. I loved him. Anthony Quinn, he played the best Zorba I ever saw. I never saw another Zorba, but that was the best of all the Zorbas I ever saw. Anthony Quinn was one of the greatest actors of all time. Who do we have like him today? Nobody. But you think he's dead. Remember he was on my show in the 90s? I was so honored when, when Anthony Quinn came on the show. He had uh, uh, he retired. He was living in Rhode Island on a big estate, and he was a sculptor at that point. And he was so gracious, as they say. He really was. Not arrogant, not hostile, not making believe he was better than me or anyone else. I loved him on the show. Older guy, married again, had another family, moved to Rhode Island, uh, sculpted and dropped dead. He's gone. Just imagine now the bones staring up, the teeth. I'm in a very bizarre mood. I don't know what it is. Something, maybe the fish I just ate. <laughs> maybe the fish did it to me. I don't know. I'm thinking now about this. Teddy, are you feeling okay from the roast beef? He looks better than I do. Oh, when I come back, we'll talk about uh, socialism, Trump, whatever. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. A new study in Canada, one of the, uh, the finance minister of Canada wants to increase sales tax and lower income tax. How would you feel about a higher sales tax in America? in every state with lower state income taxes like in California. How come Jerry Brown doesn't do that? He taxes all the rich out of the state except those who live on yachts in the Mediterranean in the movie business. I often wonder about that. How do so many billionaires in L.A., why do they stay here when they're paying legitimately a straight-up 15% state tax on top of federal because they're not paying it? Yeah, I don't understand anything. They, their, gov their company makes the money, an offshore company, then they pay themselves a, a salary just enough to pay their expenses. They pay no taxes at all. That's all. That's how it works. And the reason they don't get caught is because they own the government. They smear them off, throw fundraisers for them in Beverly Hills. <clears throat> you, you ask yourself why. They all drive Priuses. They live in houses that are minimum $30 million. That's a, that's a guest house now in Beverly Hills. $30 million. And... Uh, they drive a Prius to show you they're down with the environment. Then they throw parties for Hillary and, and Barack Obama. Pure, pure crazy, right? Socialist. And, and many of them are Jewish, I'm sorry to tell you. And they support Israel, yet they support these people who stab Israel in the back. How does that work? Why? Because their industry is supported by the regime. Tax credits for Hollywood. And they get away with paying no taxes. So how, what does it cost them? Nothing. It's all business. Higher sales tax, less income tax. That's it. Don't call me on that. It's a no-brainer. How about lower sales tax and lower income tax and fire 20% of the bureaucrats in California? Kick them out of the country altogether for what they've done to the state. Yeah, how about it? Lower sales tax and lower income tax in the state of California and cut 20% of Jerry Brown's uh, uh, bureaucracy. Would that work for you? That's all. You don't want to, you really want to talk about the Iran deal. What, what can you say about it? You know, there's a pathetic rally coming up. Why would anyone go to that? It's done already. They know the deal. Anyone who stands there knows that they're on the wrong side. They lost already. Oh, they're going to stand there for principle. I get it. I would tell Trump not to go to that. He's speaking. I don't blame him. I'm against the two. But it's a de facto win for the uh, socialist Islamist in the White House. He won. He pulled off another one. Another one he pulled off. Obamacare. I don't have to list them, do I? All the wonderful things. That's why I drifted from lunch into the dead animals. I was thinking about dead horses. It's why I never had a horse. 
even though I was a little boy, my first hero was actually Gene Autry. Again, any psychiatrist listening, boy,